Welcome to Excel Boats on the X Podcast, powered by Mud Buddy Motors. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. The only podcast to bring you insights on the world of hunting, fishing, and boating. With your host, J. Paul Jackson. You don't say much, do you? Now, load up and side in. This is On the X. Welcome to the Excel Boats On the X Podcast, powered by Mud Buddy Motors. I'm your host, J. Paul Jackson, and today I have my co-host, Jason Handsome and Charming Croxford along with us, along with catfishing guru and Excel Boats Pro Staff member, Chad Waugh. Chad, man. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you doing? Doing good. I'm doing good. Getting excited about this new season. Can't wait to get started. Man, I am super excited to have you on today. And I know I was talking with Jay Paul earlier, and he was super stoked to have you on today, too. Yeah, you know, we've launched this new Cat Pro boat, the Storm Cat, and uh, been a lot of hype, a lot of excitement about that. And, you know, hadn't got to talk much with some of you catfish guys about what you guys do and about the new boat. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity here. I know that the season for you guys is about to kick off. I saw on your Facebook, you posted a upcoming tournament um uh, at the end of the month um assuming that <laughs> this weather breaks and the flood water subsides a little bit i guess yeah i've got my first tournament coming up march 31st it's actually on a reservoir in muncie indiana prairie creek reservoir so i don't think the flood waters are going to hurt us too bad there what about the snow well the snow is a little different it's snowing here today but as long as there's open water, we're going fishing. So I just have to ask, Chad, um, do you noodle or, you know, can you go more in depth about catfishing? Because for me personally, uh, I don't know much about it, but I always find it fascinating. No, I don't noodle. Uh, I rod and reel only. And I'm 100% CPR, which is catch, photo, and release. I don't keep any fish. I make sure they all go back so they can be caught again another day. That's pretty cool. So you're a rod and reel guy only. Now, you guys have several different techniques that you use. Uh, I know you do a lot of drifting. Uh, You use um, live bait, or not necessarily live bait, but cut herring. Do you use artificial stuff much? No, I don't. I use a lot of the cut skipjack and shad and uh, some creek chubs do a lot of drifting and uh, dragon baits. I do a lot of the dragons with the planer boards and stuff, and it works out really well. produces a lot of fish. So when you say dragon, I mean, for those of us that don't catfish. Yeah. uh, Dragon baits is basically you have a weight on the bottom with your bait positioned a couple feet up off the bottom, and you throw it out and just drag along at a, slow speed 0.3 0.4 let it drag the bottom wait on the big bite yeah some folks call that bumping no bumping's actually going backwards with the current so what's the difference between yeah, what's the dragging drifting and bumping dragging a lot of times we'll do up river or I, I use it a lot in the lakes and the reservoirs that's a technique i'll use a lot where there's not a lot of current use a trolling motor to uh drag you along and uh bumping is more or less bumping baits ahead of the boat down in a current situation okay uh, so my question for you is what kind what type of uh if you were going to suggest uh, a certain type of rod to use with catfish and what type of rod do you use and and why do you suggest it i use a tomcat custom rod i'm part of their pro staff and I really love these rods. They're a good all-around rod. Got plenty of backbone to them. Plus, they got a nice sensitive tip. I like to use a medium heavy action on those. Back that up with uh, some 65-pound Power Pro. Reeled on a nice Akuma Classic Reel. That's basically my setup. Awesome, awesome. And then do you use any type of rod holders on your Excel boat or... I use Driftmaster rod holders. I'm also on their uh, pro staff. So who who are you currently pro staffing with right now? 
Currently, I'm with Excel Boats, of course, Driftmaster Rod Holders, uh, Tomcat Rods, uh, also with uh, Double X Tackle and uh, Bass and Moore Bait Store out of Owensboro, Kentucky, and uh, Cat River Inc. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're pretty well stocked up then. You got rods, rod holders, bait, boat, reels, pretty much everything covered there. We need to, we need to get him a, a bow real quick, get him some clothing. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Do you have a clothing sponsor? No, I do not. We got to take care of that. I'll call Scott Gl Clyburn over at Abo Outdoors, and uh, we'll get you fixed up with some of their new technical uh, fishing wear that they've got coming out just in time for the spring. Awesome. That sounds yeah, awesome. Those guys are making some really, really cool products. You know, they've went from graphic tees to uh, now real, real performance gear. And, you know, all of these boats that we're coming out with too, that's a pretty good fit because I, I was over at the factory last week. I actually picked up the uh, Cat Pro from one location or the new Storm Cat, I'm sorry, from one location and took it back to the factory. And man, that is one impressive boat. I mean, from the huge live well to the uh, walk through windshield, something that we've never done before. I know your former boat was a, a side console boat. How big a deal is it to have that new windshield available to you on the Stormcat? Oh, that new windshield is something we've been looking forward to for a couple of years now. It's going to really cut down on the spray and the wind and everything give you something to actually hide behind on those long runs. You know, sometimes we run 30, 40 miles to go fish and wide open, you know, you can get some spray and get a little wet sometimes. Yeah. I know they're putting a top on it too, right? Jay Paul. Yeah. The boat's going to Ohio uh, the first of next week and uh, we'll be putting a top on it. And then I'll be going back over to the plant, me and my crew. And we're going to head, I think probably down to uh, Heber and put the boat on the water one more time and do a little bit more testing on it. I was talking to DJ. Um, I don't know if you know this, Chad, but with that uh, big Suzuki four-stroke on it, that new boat, as large as it is, uh, being a pad boat, it's got an incredible ride. And uh, he coaxed 58 miles an hour out of that boat yesterday on the lake. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, you talk about those long runs, you know, now we're going to have in the Stormcat a boat available that will get you to where the fish are in, in a hurry. And I know in a tournament, that is just gigantic to be able to beat the competition there. Yeah, and that big 66-gallon fuel tank really helps out a lot, too. No well, doubt about it. That, and that you can see on, uh, sorry about that, but you can see, too, on Excel Boat's uh, Facebook page, you can see on the video, too, the, just the ride, too, is smooth. It's not rough, you know, it, it's a smooth ride and a smooth boat, and you can even see the live well on there and everything. I mean, it's an amazing boat. Yeah, guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, go to our Facebook page. Um, Jeffrey just put a nice video up on there, I believe, yesterday. And that boat, I, I don't know if you know this, Jason, but when that was filmed, uh, it was part of the day. It was actually white capping. I mean, you can yeah. see serious, serious chop that day. And that boat still is super duper smooth. I, I can't wait to get it on the water next week after we get the top on it. You got to take a look at it at the Catfish Conference, didn't you, Chad? No, I didn't. I did not get to make it to the conference this year. Oh, really? I have uh, gotten several pictures from everybody, though, and I've really kept up on the build and everything. So, yeah, Chad, I'm well, really anxious of, to get it. Yeah, you've been one of our biggest advocates with also help, you know, sharing it out to our Excel Boats fan page and, you know, getting the word out and stuff like that. We appreciate it. No, oh, you're welcome. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a great ambassador for the brand, that's for sure, Chad. And the input that you had on that boat, too, technically has been, you know, great. I mean, we had several of our catfish pros that we reached out to, and all of them gave us some really good information. And, you know, for you guys out there that are catfish, I mean, you've got to check out this new Storm Cat because it's got some great innovations to it. And it's not something that we just came up with and said, oh, we, we need to do another catfishing boat to go to our Cat Pro line. I know Glenn talked to you, I think, and, and Dave at length, Chad, in the design of this boat, didn't they? 
Yeah, I was involved on a couple conference calls with the design team, getting things around. But the whole thing was really a group effort with all the pro staff and everything. Everybody contributed in some way of getting this boat done. Yeah, this is a well thought out vessel that, you know, instead of just having some engineer or designer draw up what they thought we should have in the catfishing line, you know, we reached out to all the guys on the pro staff and took their input. And I think whenever you do that, the outcome is going to be just remarkable. And you can see that in that boat and the way that it rides and how fast it is. You know, you were talking about that 66 gallon fuel tank. You pair that with that, uh, four stroke Suzuki, the fuel economy on this boat is unbelievable. And I run a four stroke 140 Suzuki on my Bay Pro. I know personally that that motor is not only super powerful and super efficient, but it is bulletproof, you know, something that's super dependable out there. As a matter of fact, all of our motor partners are making great products these days, but that Suzuki 140 and the 200 that's on the uh, Cat Pro or Stormcat is a heck of a nice boat. Uh, the storm cat's going to get a 250, isn't it? That's right. I'm sorry. My bad. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, probably pretty difficult to get 58 miles an hour out of a 200 on that boat. That would be remarkable. But yeah. <laughs> a uh, 250 really performs. Uh, Chad, well, don't you have a boat right now that's for sale, though, too? Yes, I do. I have the 217 Cat Pro 24 footer. It is still for sale. If anybody's interested in that, get a hold of Dave Reynolds for pricing and details. And I mean, that boat that, that's for sale, that's a sweet looking boat, too. Yeah, it is. That's a nice boat. Uh, Live Wells tournament ready and everything on it. Uh, I fished out of it all year, did really well out of it. And it's just a great boat, as so all the Excel boats are, but this one is ready to go. Well, it's still very, got, even though you fished out of it all year, it doesn't have a lot of hours on it. And that boat looks like brand new. I, as a matter of fact, just a few minutes ago, shared that boat um, from your timeline on your Facebook, Chad, to a buddy's timeline, uh, trying to help you sell it. Because, guys, it is a super nice boat. You know, by the way, if you're out there listening and you're looking for a deal on an Excel, look to our pro staff, guys, because, you know, these boats, um, I have one that's about to be out there right now, also an F4 Pro Hull. And all of these boats that we uh, put up there, of course, we can't sell them as new through a dealer because they've been utilized by our pro staff like this Cat Pro that Chad's had. But we still stand behind that boat. We still warranty it just the same. These boats are all well-maintained, super low hours, and the discount off of retail or even dealer costs that you can get on one of these boats like Chad's is remarkable. If you're looking for a Cat Pro, you definitely need to check out Chad Waugh's uh, current boat that's listed on his Facebook page for sale. Well, the, the cool thing that I find really cool about the Pro Staffers boats is it's not just your regular boat. You actually, they, you guys put a lot of, you guys get all the main key features on there. You guys put your own little twist on there. So, I mean, you're not getting the basic boat. You know, you're getting a boat with all the features, with all the best specs you could get on top of it at a low cost, you know? So it's kind of, you know, Jeff, I know Jeff over here, he's like, man, I really want to get Chad Wah's boat, you know, just for us over here in marketing. And I couldn't, you know, I can't deny it. I want it too. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some special features such as the live well's been pumped up. And it's got the bait well in it, the green LED light package and everything in it. It's nice. It's a nice boat. Yeah, and this boat is listed. I mean, it is a Cat Pro, but the thing about all of our boats, you know, just like my Bay Pro, the versatility out there in these boats is unbelievable. Um, I know there are several guys that uh, are big-time crappie fishermen that are running those Cat Pros because they're perfect for drifting. You know, they're, they're made for taking on the big water. If you're out in you know, at, at Sardis or Grenada Lake or any of the big crappie reservoirs in the south, uh, this Cat Pro is absolutely perfect for crappie fishing also because it's set up to run multiple rods off of it, isn't it, Chad? Yes, it is. It's got the track on it for the rod holders. No holes need to be drilled in the boat. No holes have been drilled in the boat. It's 100% original. And you got room for two seats, three seats, actually, up on the front deck up there. 
And it, does it come with the trolling motor with it, Chad? It's got a Minn Kota Edge trolling motor on it. Awesome. Yeah, the whole boat's complete and ready to go. You know, talking about that boat, too, I've seen some videos of you landing some pretty monster fish in that. What, what's the biggest catfish that you've landed to date on a rod and reel? 67 pounds. Holy melt. Holy crap. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. No, I landed 67 pound catfish in that boat uh, last October at the Monsters on the Ohio tournament in Owensboro, Kentucky. Oh, it actually you. got me a uh, big fish for that one. Wow. So I have to ask though, Chad, have you ever been catfish slapped? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just, I was watching a couple videos the other day and the guy was saying, oh man, I, out of 20 years, I've never been catfish slapped. And then he gets slapped in the face by the catfish. <laughs> yeah, I've got one of my uh, old profile pics is me holding a 45 pounder on my shoulder and he slapped me good. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen before too. Uh, have you ever wanted to try, speaking of catfish slap, it happens a lot when you're, when you're noodling. I've actually done that a few times. Have you ever thought about it? You ever wanted to try it? No, <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Why? Why not, Chad? I don't agree with noodling. It's a conservation thing. I just don't agree with it. When you're pulling that fish off of the nest, you're potentially damaging thousands of eggs. Yeah, I can respect I, that. I, I actually didn't even know that. Um, to be honest, I didn't know. So. I just thought they were just hiding in the mud, just laying there doing it. But so they're actually just over a nest. Yeah, they're on a nest. So when you pull that yeah, fish off of that nest, it won't go back. That leaves thousands of fry unprotected. Oh wow! Yeah, a lot of times during the spawn, you will, uh, you know, that that is a really, really for a lot of the guys that noodle or grapple or, you know, goes by a lot of different names. Uh, a lot of guys do it during the spawn and do take the fish off the nest. But in, in a lot of places, uh, though, particularly in, you know, some of the rivers around here that have a little bit of current in them and have the larger cats, they'll get up into holes in the bank and stumps and stump holes and things like that anytime during the year, not just when they're spawning. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, there's the way you noodle, too. I mean, there are some guys that uh, run a um, stringer, basically, or a rope through their gills to pull them out. And when you do that, you run the risk of damaging their gills and really damaging that fish's ability to breathe and even survive. I did, I, that's, that's crazy because I never actually knew that, you know, and it's, it's kind of insane if you actually step back and think about it, you know. Yeah, when we'd done it around here, when I was a kid, my grandfather used to like to do it, and I'd go with him and do it. Mainly, we'd get, you know, fish that were up in hollow logs or cutbacks underneath the bank and just reach in and you kind of stick your hand up in there real easy-like and try to feel for the fish. And a lot of times, the bigger fish, when you stick your hand in there, they'll turn around and grab it. They'll turn yeah. around, you know, take your fingers like they're uh, bait fish and bite down. And then when they do, you grab down hopefully on that lower jaw and, and drag them out there oh wow it, it's pretty it's a pretty neat deal if you've never done it but chad's right i mean if you're conservation minded there are times when you definitely when you know noodling or grappling can be really really tough on the catfish yeah no definitely uh, so my question here um is for chad is chad once you get rid of your pro stop boat what boat are you mainly trying to get for the new pro stop boat Oh, the storm cat, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, Jason Croxford, that is a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew the answer to that before. Right. Oh. Yeah, we put a lot of time in getting this thing ready to go and everything, and I just can't wait to get in it and put it out on the water and put it through its moves, see what it can do. I, okay. I'm just excited to get some video footage of all of our pro staff team in it and be able to share it out. I mean, people, you know, that, that boat's getting a lot of attention right now. It's amazing. Well, it's a good looking boat. I mean, I, you know, I, we've had a couple of comments. Oh, that thing's ugly because of the windshield or whatever. Let me tell you something. 
when you're out there and it's it's cold and drizzling rain and you got that windshield with those windshield wipers on it and everything, the sucker becomes beautiful really quick, doesn't it, Chad? Yes, it does. Well, you're going to be the sorry sucker when the boat drives past you on a rainy day and you're in the rain and that dude's in the boat smiling and waving at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me how ugly it is now. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, I really do think it's a good looking boat and it's got so many different paint schemes available, just like our Bay Pros, you know, for, for you catfish guys, you got a lot of variety available to you in that boat, that's for sure. Yeah, and the storage in this boat, I mean, that is just phenomenal, all the storage they've incorporated in this boat. Two 10-foot rod lockers on it, lockable, I mean, that's phenomenal on any boat. No doubt. No doubt. Speaking of, of rod lock, 10 foot rod lockers, what length are most of your medium heavy action rods that you're fishing with? Most of them are seven and a half to uh, eight foot. Uh, the Tomcat rods I fish with are eight footers. So that 10 foot rod box means you've got a lot of flexibility there also. Yes, it does. I can put a lot of stuff in there besides just the rods. Plus when I go to these tournaments where I have to get a motel room, I don't have to worry about carrying my rods in. I can lock them up in the boat. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big, big deal, too, when you're traveling out on the road, having so much watertight, lockable storage there. And that boat certainly has got it. Yes, it's got lots of storage room, plus the anchor locker up front, too. That keeps your anchor off the front deck, rolling around, puts it nice and secure. That's always nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got to pull it behind my truck. I can't wait next week to get over there and get behind the steering wheel in this thing and get it out on the water and see how it performs. I'll, I'll be sure and uh, send you uh, uh, some uh, video, too, while I'm out on the water next week, Chad. You need to just get oh, out yeah. to snow in Indiana and bring your butt on down to Mountain View next week and get out on the water with me. That is exactly what I was just thinking, that he should get down there with you. Yeah, I'd love to get down there. Love to be able to bring home one of them new storm cats too, though. <laughs> he, he's not going up there empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you better wait a while before you come down. I think we've got a couple more I saw in production last week, but it, it's going to be a little while. Um, not, not even sure that we're taking dealer orders on them yet, but I know that getting you your new pro staff boat built will be a high priority. So it will be one of the boats, uh, maybe even be one that is in uh, – in the build process right now as a matter of fact i bet you that one of those boats i saw last week chad is tagged already to be your new pro staff boat that would be just great so well, i, I, I can't do wait have, to get one yeah so i do have to ask them chad what is this that i saw on facebook coffee with chad walk oh the coffee with chad videos that's just something i started one winter when i was really bored <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do and uh, started doing it on YouTube there and posting them on Facebook. And then they come up with this Facebook Live and I started doing them. So yeah. when I, I've got some things to talk about, I get on there and do a little morning coffee with Chad video. Yeah, I was, I woke up, it was like five o'clock in the morning. My, my kids wouldn't go to, they were sick all night. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go make some coffee, forget it, I'm up. I go to look on Facebook and there you are sipping coffee. I was like, oh man, I have to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was good though. I actually found it entertaining. I thought it was super fun. And you know, it's a, uh, uh, you have a, quite a few people watching those videos too. Yeah, I've got a nice little group that watches every morning and, well, not every morning when I put one out and, and they are pretty faithful about watching it when I put them out. Wow, that's neat. I'll have to check that out. Coffee with Chad. How, do you do it on a regular schedule? No, I haven't got a regular schedule going because uh, sometimes I find it a little hard to find current events to talk about in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> I talk I a lot you. about the tournaments I'm going to fish or how I did in a tournament, stuff like that. Yeah. Now tell me, I'm really familiar with like the BASS tournament trail for the, and the FLW for the bass fishermen and crappie masters for the crappie guys. What's the big circuit in cat fishing and uh, what circuit do you fish? Big circuit in cat fishing would be the Cabela's King Cat Trail. They travel all over the nation from Texas all the way to West Virginia and Ohio up through here doing tournaments. I think they do two to three tournaments a month. 
And if you want to get involved with their tournament trail, Jeremy Coe, C-O-E, is the guy to get in touch with on that. He puts on a really nice tournament trail. Cool. And uh, the tournament trail that I'm following this year, last year I chased the JKV trail and down in Owensboro, Kentucky, and that was a lot of road time, a lot of driving. So this year I'm going with a new tournament trail that just started here in Indiana. It's called the Master Bait and Tackle Trail. The guy's got a little, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got a bait store that's called the Master Bait Wait. Shop. Hold on, Chad. Say that again for me. I'm sorry. What's it called? Master Bait and Tackle. <laughs> you don't want to say that one too fast, though. Yeah. The Master Bait and Tackle Trail. <laughs> I, I noticed I paused in all the right spots there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying. I was biting my lip. You, you can't see us, but Jason and I, we both are linked also by Zoom video, and both of us were just biting our lip after you said that. No disrespect to that tournament trail. No, no. Wait, what was it? It was like oh, a, a couple of weeks ago, someone had a, um, a hunting event or something like that, and it was the same thing. It's like you guys should have reworded it a little different. <laughs> that may not have been the best thought out. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a, a bait store by the same name. So I'll get you guys some t shirts. <laughs> Please, I want a master bait and tackle t shirt. He's got to do that purposely. <laughs> oh, you know, you got it. <laughs> yeah, people have to visit that website just for that, you know, and, and that's one of those things where you can't help but laugh. It's kind of like, you know, I don't know many people that can say Regina, Saskatchewan without smiling. <laughs> 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 you see, uh, something about saying the owner, old Jeffrey, yeah, the owner of Jefferson Parish he's got a really good sense of humor <laughs> that's cool well, Jefferson if you're listening buddy <laughs> that is really, really cool you're going to have a bunch of people visit your Facebook page and your website today after they listen to this podcast I'm sure man I almost want to give them away on the Excel Boats Facebook lives you know <laughs> to see if anyone catches it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> wow yeah. oh man all but right so Chad Jefferson's put together a, a real nice trail this year he's got 13 tournaments 10 of those are points tournaments all of them within the state of Indiana on their lakes and reservoirs and then of course I'll fish the uh, Rising Sun tournament down in uh, Rising Sun Indiana that's a big two day event draws close to 200 boats and then of course the monsters on the ohio yeah. biggest tournament east of the mississippi in so, october yeah. so what type of catfish are you getting during these tournaments are you getting flatheads or is it just a variety of them just a variety you get blues flatheads channel cats the uh tournament trail i'm fishing this year will be mainly channel cats a few of the locations will have blues and flatheads <clears throat> but the biggest ones you want to go for are the blues, of course. Yeah, the blue ones. Yeah, blue yeah. cats, they can get, get huge. And they put up quite a fight, too. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, I want to get in the boat with you at some point in one of these tournaments with uh, my camera guys. And definitely you and I need to get out on the water a little bit here and when you get your new boat and the new storm cat and uh, we need to fish a little bit and video a little bit and hopefully, you know, catch a few big ones along the way. Sounds like fun anytime. Well, I'm definitely up for it. So, um, you know, we have, of course, waterfowlers on here quite often. And we tend to ask everybody that we get on the show that's a duck hunter, if I went looking in your blind bag, what would I find for a snack? So I know you guys spend a lot of time, long days out on the water. If I got looking in your uh, ice chest, uh, looking for a snack, what am I going to find always there? Beef jerky and peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Beef jerky and peanuts. That's great for being on the water, too. Yeah, I use the shell peanuts. They also do use good for GPS markers if your locator goes out. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Oh, and, and if I want to grab something cold to drink out of your cooler, what what what's going to be in the can? 
Oh, Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi, peanuts. Do you ever put your peanuts in your Diet Pepsi? Well, of course. I'm from down south. <laughs> Amen, baby. Peanuts. I've never, I've never heard of that. People do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Peanuts in your Coke? No way, man. Oh, you got to try it. Oh, it's. Mm. I'm going to go try it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, get you a bag of good old planter salted peanuts, roasted ones, and drop them in your Coke and uh, you oh, take man. a sip, you know, suck out a peanut too and chew on it. Man, it's <laughs> a delicate thing. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe he didn't know that chad just a rank really? amateur isn't he <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna sit here and you know i i find it entertaining that i'm actually learning stuff here but it's like you know the the hostess cakes the you know the <laughs> you know uh, who is it sophie she has those applesauce things in hers and <laughs> I'm just learning things, you know, every day. <laughs> hey, Chad, he didn't know that you could deep fry a honey bun. No. Oh, he didn't. No. <laughs> yeah, I thought you. everybody knew that. Yeah. The, only, the only thing I know is deep frying a Twinkie, that, you know. <laughs> well, this is off subject completely, except for the fact that it's on the Mississippi River. But I'm sure you fished the Mississippi some, don't you, Chad, or have? I have. I fished Mississippi River monsters there a couple years ago with George Young Jr. down there. Got yeah, to meet so, Bill Dance and hang out with him a little bit. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Down there by the pyramid on the Mississippi River at Memphis. Well, up near St. Louis, there is a ballpark um, in Sauge, Illinois, on the Illinois, East St. Louis side of the of the river there. And you can actually, from the ballpark, you can see the river and you can see the arch. But the, the delicacy there, Jason, you're going to love this, is yeah. a Krispy Kreme burger. Oh, man, that sounds good. It's a yeah. cheeseburger that they make, and for instead of a bun, they slice a Krispy Kreme donut in half and fry it, and then put it on the burger. Oh man, you give me one of those with the cold beer, I'll be a happy camper. Right <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'll be passed out in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you we don't allow any drinking while we're fishing, right, no. Chad? You, if you're gonna be drinking, right. you need to be drinking. If you're gonna be fishing, you need to be fishing. The thing about my That's dad right. says is if you're going fishing, you might as well bring the hard alcohol. <laughs> and if you're going <laughs> hunting, you just bring the beer, you know? Oh, my. But that explains he never fell in yet, Dan. Oh, man. No, he's hit me with the rod a couple times. Let's put it that way, though. <laughs> <laughs> or he'll just say, jump in and get it, boy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I... I just got a text while we're sitting here, George. Um, George, you just George. Said, I apologize. He just called me a few minutes ago. Chad, Chad, do you know what the asking price is on that boat? No, I don't, but it will depend on the uh, accessories. I know that a uh, number has been thrown out there between 40 and 55. Yeah. No, I'm talking about on your boat. I just got a text. Oh, on my boat. Your boat. My boat's boat. asking. My, the asking price on my boat was 26 nine. 26 9. All right. Well, I'm fixing to text this guy right now. Maybe I just sold it for you after putting it on Facebook okay. there. But well, yeah, that's a good deal. Though, check it out, guys. That's Take a killer part. deal. No, oh, it is. That boat retails for over 35 grand. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big discount. Huge savings. Sure is. All right. Great. Well, man, I know we've taken up a bunch of your time today, Chad, but it's been, <laughs> it's been great having you. Uh, on here, we've learned a lot today about drifting and catfishing in general, the new storm cat, and even a little bit about the master bait and tackle trail. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure, guys. It's been a hoot. Yes, sir. We'll have to have you on here again. So once again, before we go, uh, Chad, if somebody wants to follow you, uh, they can follow you on Facebook, correct? Just Chad Waugh? That's right, Chad Wall on Facebook. Yeah, that's uh, Chad C H A D Y W A U G H on Facebook. Yep. And first tournament of the year will be there in Indiana, uh, the very end of the month, correct? Yep, March thirty first. Wow. Well, good luck, buddy. Uh, hope you do well. Can't wait to get you in your new storm cat. And I'll send you some photos and maybe even some shots, uh, some video from my iPhone next week when we put this sucker on the water and we'll be talking about it again. All right. Be sure and do that. Jason, you got anything else, brother? 
No, I'm just, I'm, you know, Chad, it's always a pleasure talking with you. I mean, you're a great advocate for Excel Boats. I mean, uh, guys, if you also want to talk with Chad, you can go to the Excel Boats owner page. He is one of the admins over there, and um, he is constantly posting on there as well. But no, Chad, uh, been a pleasure, and I'm glad we finally got you on this podcast. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure, guys. It's been a lot of fun. I enjoyed yes, it. Sir. We've enjoyed having you, and let me tell you, uh, all of us here, uh, the other folks on the pro staff and in the office, we really appreciate everything that you do to help support the brand and support the sport. Hope you do really well this year and have a great uh, season on the tournament trail. Um, until next week, guys, Dave, we had Chad Waugh with us. Really appreciate everybody that came on. Jason, thanks so much yeah. for stepping in today. And on behalf of my co-host, Jason Croxford, our go guest, Chad Waugh, Thanks for listening once again to this edition of the Excel Boats on the X Podcast, powered by Mud Buddy Motors.